Good morning, o doers. My name is Jose Ignacio. Welcome to another VoIP lesson. Now, when someone calls your business, they might need to get in touch with customer support, your sales team, or somebody direct. They might also just need to know some random information, like your store hours, or they may want to know who that person was that helped them and leave them voicemail. Well, without a system to organize calls, getting your callers in touch with the right people can be pretty chaotic. At Stealthy Wood, we use a dial plan to manage how incoming calls are handled. That way, all of our callers are directed to the right people and the right information. And we don't lose any leads or have unhappy customers. We can rest easy knowing there's a system in place. So I'm going to be showing you how to configure everything through a provider called Axivox. And as you've heard before, your screen may look a little bit different. It just depends on which provider you're using. So let's hop right in. So here I am on the Axivox admin portal, specifically underneath dial plans over here on the left hand side. Now in here I can create as many dial plans as I like, but today I want to create one for incoming calls to Stealthy Woods main company number. So I'm going to select add a dial plan. And the very first thing I have to do is add an internal extension. I can make up an extension that internal users of this network can use to connect to this dial plan very quickly. I'm going to type in one, two, three, because that's super hard to remember. I know. And let's name this one Stealthy Wood Mainline. I try to be practical with these. There we go. Now, save and make sure you apply. Now, up next, I'm going to click on the blue visual editor button that we have once that it pops up right there for the Stealthy Wood line. So inside of the visual editor, this start button over here marks the start of our workflow. I can move it around. I can also zoom in and out, holding down control and using the mouse wheel. Now underneath new element up here at the top, there's a drop down list with a ton of categories of elements I can add. Now I'm going to select call up here at the top and hit add. And would you look at that a little box popped up. Now through this, I can actually connect the call box to the start box by going open circle, close circle. Boom. Just like that connected. Now let's double click this call box because you'll notice a lot of these boxes have cool options. Now in here, I'm going to select add an odd destination over here and I'm going to pick Laura. Great. What did I just do? Well, now whenever anyone starts a call in here, it's going to immediately start ringing Laura's phone for zero to 30 seconds. Now let's assume I want to add another person in here, or in this case, we're also going to do a group, our sales group. And now they're going to ring at the same time. But what if I didn't want that out doers? Maybe I wanted to ring Laura for 30 seconds and then after that ring the sales group. So in order to do that, it's pretty simple. We actually just move this over here and it's very intuitive. Now the first 30 seconds is Laura and the next 30 seconds is our sales group. And once I'm done, I'm going to hit save. Great. Now a new scenario. After a caller rings to Laura and the sales group and no one answers, I want them to go to Laura's voicemail. So to do that, it's pretty simple too. We go up here and we select voicemail and hit add. Drag that over here to the far right and connect it once again. I'm going to keep moving these so you have a nice little visual aid. Great. So I noticed something though. It's not configured yet. Let's go on in there. And we're going to set this one to Laura's voicemail right there. If you want to choose someone else, you can. That is your prerogative. Now this is an endpoint because there's no circle to connect it to anything else. It's important to have a resolution for every path in the flow. This can be a circle back to the beginning, a voicemail conference, another endpoint, a hang up. After setting up that basic flow, we notice we don't have a welcome message to let people know that they've called Stealthy Woods Mainline. Let's not keep them guessing. So I'm going to choose play a file up at the top and hit add. Drag that box on over there. And now we're going to disconnect the start from the call to this box now. Great. Then I'm going to double click the play box to have our options. We want a greeting to play at the very beginning when people call. And once we're done, make sure you save. Now you can also create or upload audio files in the audio messages section of the Axavox admin portal. For more info, check out the videos on those. Now I also want our customers to be able to choose options from a menu. I'm being indecisive. So let's go up here at the top and choose menu. And this one's going to be big, so I'm going to have to move some stuff over. Sorry, Laura. Sorry, sales group. And let's drag you right there. Okay, so immediately after the play, we're going to have our menu right there. Now inside of here... I want people to immediately hear Welcome to Stealthy Wood before they are directed to anything else. And if I double click the main menu, I can also select the greeting message, which in our case, well, people need to know what the options are. So I'm going to select press one for X, press two for Y. Why? Because now they know which numbers to pick. Then I can also choose how long the timeout is, meaning the length of time people have to make their selections before it times out. 
After this, the caller can be disconnected. I'm going to leave it at 30 seconds because people can be indecisive and hit save. With all of this done, we're all set to go. Now we can start connecting stuff. How about when customer select one goes over to Laura and the sales team and then it completes that other flow? All right, and now let's make this a little bit simple too. Let's assume that if we want callers to press the star button to listen to the menu options again, how would we do that? We're going to do something pretty cool that I like. We're going to drag this. I'm going to connect it all the way back right there. You can actually do that. And to get even more wild, let's assume that I want to add a call queue. So let's select call queue over here at the top. Once that we have that all set up. And then remember about the zooming. You want all of this to be able to fit inside of here so it's easier to move around. All right, there we have our queue right there. And next, I'm going to position this right after the menu. And then I'm going to double click. We got to select what type of queue we want over here. Let's assume it's technical support. Oop, small o doopsy. Technical support and hit save. Great. Now, what do we want to connect this to? Well, let's assume that's the second option that we want right there. Perfect. Now pressing to takes them there. Please check out our video on call queues to learn more about what I just did right there and what it is. Now, let's assume that if all our technical support agents can be reached and they're not available, I want them to call. Well, actually, I don't want the call to go anywhere. I want the call line to end. So I'm actually going to now choose a very not nice thing, but we're going to select hang up. We're going to leave them on red. Great. So after this, it's just going to go to hang up. So where do we want to connect this to? Well, ideally, it would be after the queue then. They've been waiting, and then it's time to end this one as well. As you'll notice, we don't have another circle there. Now, let's talk about something else that we can add in here just to make this even more complicated. Let's assume I want a conference, and we're going to hit Add. Great. Now we're going to put this kind of over here just because it's going to be its own little option, and I'm running out of space, oh doers. So let's double-click that, and let's assume that it's going to be user marketing. That's a good conference right there, and hit Save. Now that it's set up for that, we need to connect it. So which one do we want to pick? Well, we're just going down the list, so we're going to select three. That is now our third option, and I'm going to try to make this a little bit easier for you guys to see right there. There we go. Now you can see this. And now that you know that this is a conference line, a bunch of people can join. In this case, acting as an endpoint is basically what we need as the end of our flow. So if you haven't watched the video on that as well, be sure to check it out. Also, always be sure to save and apply changes to make sure everything goes live. So in our case, we're going to hit save because we're all done here, doers. Okay. Now we have a dial plan in place, but we need to assign it to an incoming number. So now that we have that all set up, make sure you hit apply changes before moving on over here to incoming numbers. We're going to select our very first one, which is our 6541. It hasn't been configured yet. So in the destination type for voice call, remember to hit dial plan right there. And now we have to select our dial plan, which is our Stealthywood mainline. Once that we're done, hit save, and then apply changes, and you're all set up. Now, whenever someone calls this line, they'll go through the flow that we just set up. It's as easy as that. Remember that this is just one way of configuring a dial plan. There are endless ways, as you just saw, to configure a flow that works best for your company. So I encourage you to figure out which way works best for you. It could be as chaotic. But it's time to hear a completed dial plan in action. Press 1 for Stealthy Woods Sales Team. Press 2 for Stealthy Woods Support Team. Press 3 for Stealthy Woods Conference Line. Press star to hear this menu again. 